You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragons. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Jorgen's Path. That's right, we're picking back up with Jorgen. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Yep, alright. And we had just asked Lake for permission to stay, and he said yes, so off we go, guys. Sit back and enjoy. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay, let's get into it. <clears throat> also, something is going on with Telegram right now because I muted my sound settings, and for some reason it's still going off. So I don't, if you hear my Telegram going off, um, yeah, that's why. <clears throat> that went really well. I hoped he would say yes, but I never expected he'd be this excited about it. So, I will spend tonight with Lake and Jorgen. It feels surreal, but so nice. Yep, you're gonna be with some boys. Okay, looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe even gained a new passion. Supper is already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to take it with you and eat it anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. We walk back towards the guest house, joining the small crowd of students heading to the cafeteria. I should get a nice telescope sometime. This was so much fun. And here, even with, and here, even without it, the sky here is stunning. Yep, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Why did you sign us up for this? Why did you sign up for this if you thought you wouldn't enjoy it? But frankly, I had no idea what to expect. I was curious how it would actually look. Is that what you normally do at the university? Not really. We're more often analyzing data from telescopes than looking through them. Not that it's less interesting, just rather more abstract. The cafeteria is already crowded when we enter, filled with the, buzz filled with the buzzing voices of many animals of different species. Most of them are just queuing up for the, food for the table with food, but some are already sitting around the tables and eating. Are we eating here, or do you want to go somewhere else? Hmm. I thought of eating in our room. There's enough space there, and it would be quieter. I second that. I like the quietness of our room. The queue is progressing fast, so in a few seconds we're at the table with food already. Looks like each of us got an individual paper plate with two sandwiches and a slice of some cake. Small bottles of still water are standing in rows next to the plates. We each take one plate and a bottle and leave the cafeteria. Aw oh man, I can't believe the day is almost over. I had so much fun today. And I'm glad you and I'm glad to have you here with me. Suddenly, Lake wraps his arms around my sh puts his wraps his arm around my shoulder, pulling me closer. He does the same with Jorgen, and as I look over at the bat, he turns his head away. From <coughs> oh my god! No, I sneeze out of nowhere. Jesus. Okay. For a moment, I thought I saw him blushing, but that can't be true, right? And I'm glad you took me in. Thanks again, both of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. We left behind the buzz of the cafeteria, and the only thing audible now are our rhythmic paw steps on the thick carpet. The lights in the corridor are half-dimmed, giving it a quiet, intimate feel. I really like it here. Okay, let me open the door. And come on in! The room is just the same as the last time I'd been here. Only now there's a book lying on Jorgen's bed and there's no light from the outside. I'm not really sure where to sit, so I just walk up to the window not, stand, not to stand in the way. Hey, Carvin, don't stand there. Come sit down. Oh, right. We only have two chairs. Hmm. Okay, I have an idea. Jorgen, can you help me? Uh, grab the other side. Sure, coming. Lake and Jorgen put their plates on the table and lift it, then move it between the two beds. Okay, now we can sit together. Both Lake and Jorgen sit down on their respective beds, and after a moment of hesitation, I put down my plate on the table and sit down next to Lake, whom I know better. Lake's arm brushes against mine as he extends it to grab a sandwich. His fur is soft and pleasant, like his personality. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. I took some instant ramen with me in case we wouldn't get enough food, but this looks but this looks like enough. I finally take a better look at the food we've been given. Two rye bread sandwiches topped with slices of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but looks so good. Especially considering I'm already pretty hungry. The slice of apple cake is deliciously browned on the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Next to me, Lake stares at the cheese sandwiches with a look of full full with a look full of suspicion. I love this music. Is this what I think it is? If you think it's Brunost, then yes. Ah! Brunost. Oh, I know what that is. I'm a little, I never tried it during, during my four months of living here. 
It's supposedly a local delicacy, and I've seen it in stores, but somehow I never felt like buying an ingredient I'm not familiar with. It, it looks like a darker, it looks like a darker cheese, and it's served in the same way, uh, but it's a pretty different, but it's, just, but it's a pretty different from it. Is it bad? I've never had it before. I hate it. Try it, try it, Carbon. Uh, you might like it. I take a bite of the sandwich, not really knowing what to expect, but trying to stay open-minded. It's sweet, but savory, and salty, too. Kind of nutty, but has an aftertaste similar to caramel? Overall, not bad. Much different from cheese, though. I'm glad I got a heads up from Lake, though. If I'd expected the taste of cheese, I'd be pretty surprised. Hey, this is pretty good. Maybe I wouldn't eat it every day, but it's interesting. Whatever floats your boat, man. This apple cake is so good, though. I wouldn't mind having another slice. Or two, or four. I haven't finished the sandwiches yet, but the pleasure look on Lake's face is enough to convince me to have a bite now. The sweet and tart flavors, right? Uh, the sweet and tart flavor of ripe apples fills my mouth. Whew, it really is good. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily, and the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavor. Oh yeah, you're right. This is heavenly. Jorgen looks at the two of us curiously, slowly munching away at his sandwich. Guys, you know it's just food, right? You two look like you're having a simultaneous orgasm. This is both funny and slightly unnerving. Ah! Lake, please tell me you're not doing anything to Carvin right now. What? I, uh, what? I, no! Jorgen, where did you even get that idea? Oh, calm down. I'm just joking. I'm gonna try that cake now. Maybe it really is this good and will blow me away. He grabs a slice and takes a small bite, chewing it for a while. Then, hmm, it's good. And that's it? That's it. Now can I have the rest? Jorgen extends his other paw across the table and gives Lake a bap on his snout. I said it's good. I'm having the rest. Aww. Lake, who already finished his food, takes out his phone from his pocket and starts writing a message to someone. I turn towards Jorgen, not wanting to, sp not wanting to peek. Funny, this made me think of Mur Murakami. An easily noticeable fe feature of his handwriting is that the way a character eats and what they eat always says a lot about their personality. Looking at how you devoured your food, I'd be concerned about what that would say about you. Maybe that I'm passionate and fierce, like a lion should be? Or that you're an inexcusable glutton. Ah. Uh, I don't know if it's either if it's the stargazing that put him in a good mood or simply the nighttime, but Jorgen seems much more relaxed and approachable now than during the than during now than during the whole day. Or maybe it's just because it's not the first time we talk and he feels more comfortable with me already. There's a certain gleam in his eye that I didn't notice before. Uh, you really know how to put me down, don't you? I know you can take it, and you know I'm just messing around. I wouldn't do that to, I wouldn't do the same to Carvin here. I'd be fine, don't worry, I can take some teasing. You seem like quite a wholesome person, Carvin. I wouldn't feel right. Oh. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'll be back in a moment. Guys, stop messaging me, please. I'm doing something. Lake stands up and leaves the room without any further explanation. Oh. <sighs> All right. Well, that's sudden, although not entirely unexpected. Where did he go, though? Your guess is as good as mine. Jorgen goes back to eating his food, and so I do the same. It's nice not having to cook for myself. Food made by others for food made by others for me always tastes better somehow. We both stay silent until we hear a loud thud from the corridor. Ow! Lake. It's nothing. I bumped into the door frame. What? Ah. I turn around and see Lake walking into the room backwards, pulling a mattress behind him. You need any help with that? Nah, it's fine. The hardest part is over is over anyway. Oh, that's a neat idea. Who did you get this from? Travis had a free bed in his room, so I asked him if he needs the mattress for tonight. He said I can do whatever with it, as long as I bring it back unscratched before the end of the camp. That solves the problem. Where are we going to put it? Hmm, between our beds would be the best, I think. It would be in the way otherwise. Phew, I had no idea mattresses were this heavy. I'll lean it against the wall for now. We'll move it together when you finish eating. And I'll go hit a shower now. You two have fun. Have fun too, Lake. Mm-hmm, <laughs> cutie. Lake grabs a fresh pair of underwear from the wardrobe and disappears into the bathroom, leaving us alone again. Hmm, 
For, as long, for a long moment we sit, just observing each other in silence before Jorgen speaks up. Would you like something hot to drink, Carvin? I'll be making myself some. No! Yeah, sure! I reply automatically, without even thinking. I don't really feel like having tea at this hour, but at least we will be having something to do. Jorgen stands up and walks up to the cupboard with the kettle. While he prepares the drink, I take out my phone and check the messages. Oh, I have a new message from Miko. Hey, have you found a room for tonight? Miko's messages always have proper punctuation and capitalization, which is rare to see. When I write with him, I do the same. Otherwise, I'd feel crude. Yeah, I'm staying with Lake and Jorgen. <laughs> it takes a moment before Miko replies, but with the way he composes his messages, no surprise. Oh, do they have three beds in the room? No, I'll tell you tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, have a good sleep, Carvin. You too. Here you are. Jorgen comes up to me with two cups and puts them both down on the table. Hmm, will you help me move the table? He'll be more comfortable to sit on the chairs. Oh, sure. I could have waited with the cups. I stand up and grab the other side of the table, this time helping Jorgen to move it. He's a fair bit smaller than Lake, and I have to be able and I have to carry the table lower and more carefully, especially with the cups of tea on it. We managed to spill some when I bumped the leg of the table at the bag at the bed, but thankfully not nothing got but thankfully nothing got wet beside the tablecloth. Nothing. I hope it will come out somehow. Uh, but probably not. Wow, I didn't think I'd ever hear Jorgen cursing. Sorry, I couldn't really see what I was doing. Don't worry, it's not your fault. If anything, it's mine for moving the table with cups full of tea on it. Not my brightest moment. Jorgen sits down in the chair closer to the window, and I take the other one, grabbing the cup and pulling it closer. Huh, well, what's this? The liquid inside the cup is raspberry red and smells more like an apple than a tea. It's hibiscus tea with some apple. It's nice to finish a day with some herbal tea, and I really like this one. It's a nice, subtle blend with no artificial flavors. Hibiscus is used as a base for most fruit infusions, as it's widely available and cheap, and gives the brewed tea a nice deep red color. Apparently, it has even more antioxidants than green tea, which is a nice bonus. Oh, hmm, I, I didn't know that. Uh, it's the first time I've heard about it, actually. I don't know, I don't know, I don't have anything to reply to that, really. My knowledge of teas and their types is fairly limited. Back at the uni, I mostly drank coffee. I lean into the cup and take a whiff of the aroma. It's indeed mostly apple with a hint of cinnamon, and I smell and a smell I don't recognize. I carefully take a tasting sip. Huh, <sighs> it's really tart! Oh, sorry, maybe I brewed it for a bit too long. I like it intense, but if it's your first time, then a bit of sugar and some more water might help. Jurgen fetches the kettle in one paw, and a sugar bowl in the other. He pours some more water into my cup, filling it to the brim. I put a spoonful of sugar in the tea and stir the full cup carefully, but not too much, as the tablecloth is already wet. After that, I take another sip, and this time the brew tastes much better. It's still somewhat tart, but now, fruity t but now the fruity notes are dominant, nicely enhanced by the slight sweetness. It's pleasantly calming and overall very tasty, plus as it's herbal tea, so it, plus as it's herbal tea, so it won't have any caffeine. Yeah, I, I see I see why you'd want to end your day with this. It's nice, isn't it? With a cup in his paws, Jorgen turns to the windows and looks out at the sky behind the, behind it through the thick glasses. The glint in his eye I saw before is still there. I think for us for a while for any topics I I think for a while for any topics I could talk to him about, but most of them seem to just be too ordinary. Something like, oh, how did you enjoy the first day here, or how was the ride, won't work here. I could see it clearly, him turning towards me slowly at me with a disappointed look, saying, Really, Carvin? on his face? Uh, ask him about authors. I finally remember how I met him outside the guest house after lunch, where he was sitting with Travis and reading a book. What other books do you read? I mean, I remember you talking about, sn about Snoutson to the outside today. I hope I at least remember that name right. Snoutgard. He's not very well known outside of Norway, so I'm not surprised you don't know him. I mentioned Murakani when we were eating. I like his books a lot. He really is great at capturing some indescribable essence in his scenes, things that can't be just stated directly. His style is also somewhat feminine, which I like, even if I'm not a fan of the female characters in his earlier books. Why do you ask? Do you read too? Not very often, no. Unless you count books on photography or university textbooks. I sometimes I read a book when I'm riding a train or a bus. I always have a few ebooks downloaded on my phone. I watch movies more often, mostly because it takes way less time. A book that would take a few days to read often gets compressed to a two-hour film. 
True, but don't you think there's something lost in that translation? Perhaps. I don't mean to come off as a snob or something. I watch films, too. But I enjoy visualizing the story in my head and reading it, and reading it at my tempo. Mm-hmm. I like that about books, too. Hugin doesn't say anything more after that, and we fall silent. But it's not an uncomfortable kind of silence. By the contrary, I feel really relaxed and at ease with him. I sip the tea slowly, and it says it's still piping hot, and look out the window together with Jorgen, the only audible sound being the, runner, being the running shower behind the bathroom wall. Not a bad way to spend the evening, actually. Hmm. Woo-woo. It's the boy. Hey, did I miss anything? The door opens suddenly, and Lake comes out of the bathroom in a small cloud of steam, wearing only a pair of boxers. I was in a sauna with him already, but that was a completely different context. Now I'm in his room, though, and he's standing in front of me almost completely naked. It's hard not to stare. He's really good looking and has a delicate build. Though, it feels weird having this sort of having this sort of thoughts about a friend. Suddenly I remember how my friendship with Miko ended, and I feel some irrational fear creeping up on me. I won't want to lose another friend the same way. Not really. I made hibiscus tea, though. Your cup is next to the kettle. Oh great, thanks. Lake grabs the cup and walks up to the window, looking outside. His mane looks extra fluffy after the shower, like a white frozen waterfall around his head. The moon is really nice tonight. It would be so cool to see it up close someday. And then look back at Earth. I wonder how it'd look. Would it also sometimes be bright and clear and dark on other days? So that I could walk up to the window, look outside, and say that the Earth is really nice today? That'd be cool as hell. <clears throat> like, you're a silly. Do you think we're ever going to colonize the moon? I'm sure we will. It's only a matter of time. Well, it's only a matter of time if it's happening in our lifetime. I would have to give up my life here to go there in the blink of an eye. Anyway, I'll go take a shower now. Frankly, I'm feeling pretty sleepy already. I blame that on the early, on the early sunset here. Jorgen stands up and walks over to the bathroom, and I'm left alone with Blake. The lion turns around and looks at me with his bright eyes. <sighs> Bless me, I sorry about that. He's nice, isn't he? The sudden change of topic surprises me, and it takes me a moment to understand that he's talking about Jorgen and not the moon. Now that I got to know him a bit better, yes. I know he seems a bit rough around the edges at first, but he just he just takes some time to warm up to new people. I can tell that he likes you. I can still hear you. An annoyed, muffled voice comes from the bathroom. Oh, right, the bathroom isn't exactly soundproof. Uh, sorry, Jorgen. I stand up and walk over to Lake, standing next to him and leaning on the window sill, looking out. Wouldn't you be scared to go there? To the moon, I mean. Of course I would be, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't. I, I think it only makes it more exciting. Imagine leaving everything you have, everything you know behind, not knowing if you'll ever come back. Uh, someday you're going to have to leave everything you have behind anyway. It's not up to you to decide when. And didn't we kind of do the same when we moved here? Only it was much less exciting and going back is easier. Whatever you do, there's always some risk involved. Even when you're out in your garden planting tomatoes or whatever. Any given moment, you can just go poof. Wouldn't you prefer to do something exciting and interesting before that? I didn't expect the conversation to go in such a direction, so I don't really know what to say. No. Oh. Before I can think of anything, I can feel Lake's warm. I can feel Lake's arm brushing against mine lightly before he puts his arm around my waist and rests his head on my shoulder. His gaze is still fixed at the moon, reflecting bright in his wide open eyes. For a moment, I want to extend my paw and pet him, but I stop myself, simply staying motionless and letting him cling to me. For some reason, I feel like this is what he needs, so I keep still as if he was, if, as if I was a solid tree offering shelter. I can only guess what he's thinking, but about behind those dreamy eyes. But I can't shake off a feeling that he's very lonely right now. So lonely, my heart aches when I look at him. We stay like that for a long time until Jorgen returns from the bathroom. I don't turn around, but I can hear him getting into his bed, maybe grabbing a book or his phone, or maybe looking at us puzzled. Either way, he doesn't stay he doesn't say anything. After a minute or two more, Lake finally gets lets go of me, rubbing his eyes with one paw. Thank you, Carvin. It's your turn for a shower now. I know, I know, I'm going. Whoa, it's really late already. I gave Lake a soft pat before fetching the bathroom kit from my camera bag and going into the bathroom. Oh, wait, Lake, do you have a spare towel in the bathroom? Hmm, I don't know. We we each got only one big towel, but we didn't use the paw towel yet. It's quite sizable, but if you think you'll be too small, you can try asking for one at the reception. Thanks. I'm sure it'll be enough for one for one tea from uh, I'm sure it'll be enough for one use then. I first brushed my teeth, paying special attention to my long canines. 
I'm glad they had a kit with a toothbrush designed for Fila Day. Those bigger and wider universal ones are sometimes painful to use. Then I undress myself down to the boxers, putting all my clothes on the toilet lid, first making sure that it's clean, and I look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> Handsome boy. Cute boy. My mind is still occupied with Lake and how he clung to me just moments before. It felt like he really needed the warmth of the other person, but why? I kept silent the whole time I was snuggled up to me, simply wanting to comfort him, but maybe I should ask him about it later. I prefer for the two of us to be alone for that, though. I carefully inspect my face, looking for anything unfamiliar, but it looked the same as ever. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. We are about at the sleepover part, which is gonna be nice. That'll be in the next probably that'll be in the next episode. Yeah, 100 percent that'll be in the next episode. Um, I'm a little curious uh, if there's any kind of special scene with like Jorgen. Uh, I think there would be. I'm not sure. Guys, if you in the comments, you can tell me if there's anything with Jorgen, like a scene or anything that I missed, please let me know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next time, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!